for since we have such a hope we are very bold. Steve Teal, Very Bold Radio and Podcast Man. I'm excited to introduce you to my new friends, Stephen and Brittany Simpson. They've got a story that has strengthened me. It's one of those stories that gives me the chills, gives me the Holy Spirit, hey, I'm here, gives me the Jesus, I'm alive sort of uh, chills about it. And so I just asked them to come on with me and share this story because it strengthened me. I think it's going to strengthen you. Some of you need to have hope today, and this is going to bring you hope. So let's say hi to Stephen and Brittany. How are you guys doing tonight? Doing really good. Hi, doing great. Good. Well, I really appreciate y'all joining us and bringing some hope to people when you have tons of stuff going on. I'm just amazed that you've made time on a short notice and just really appreciate it and appreciate uh, your good friend, Coach Matt Langley, the old ball coach. He shared your story with me uh, back when he was at Brandeis and we did Bible study together and, uh, you know, a little while ago, it just would be on my head, like, what was that story? Uh, man, I, I need to know the details. And uh, so I reached out to him, and he connected me with you all. So I don't even know where to start. So who wants to start telling us this story? Well, I can tell you what happened, or, you know, what happened, yeah. to and, and, you know, we can go from there. But uh, when our youngest son was about a year and a half old, um, he was at his, at his grandma's house, um, my wife's mom, and uh, they converted their, you know, 1960s pool into a fishing pond. So oh, what? Yeah, yeah. So they, they, you know, they put plants and stocked it with fish so the kids could go out there and fish anytime they wanted, you know, and, and, and it was a really good thing for the kids when they were little because it was easy to go catch a couple of perch, a couple of catfish, you know, and, and, and then take them in, you know, and so. Yeah. Um, he was over there and, uh, there was a lot of, there was a lot of family over there at the time. And our, our, our third son, you know, our, our third oldest child. child, he, he was there with them. The the two older ones were with my wife at, at the elementary school. And, uh, so they were, <clears throat> they were, uh, you know, all, everybody was busy. They were doing things. We'll hunt, picked up a little plastic golf club you know, and started, you know, he was going to go hit, hit some golf balls <laughs> at a year and a half. I love at it a, at a year and a half. And so he went out to the backyard and, uh, you know, was out there and nobody noticed that he'd gone out the back door. Um, he gone out there and, and was hitting, I guess, you know, around and apparently lost the golf club, slipped out of his hand and kind of flew into the pool. Mm. So he, you know, went to the edge of the pool, reached over to try to get it. And uh, that fell in. Um, and so, you know, we don't, nobody really knows how long he was in there. Um, That's crazy. Know, yeah, we do know that, uh, that the, you know, our mother-in-law realized that he wasn't in the house. Of course, she, she ran outside, she saw the door open and started screaming, jumped in the pool, uh, you know, started had grabbed him and got him out and was yelling for somebody to call 911. Wow. Uh, we were lucky enough that the neighbor across the fence was outside. Uh, he called 911 for, and they're two blocks from the fire station. So uh, they were there very quickly, uh, got to working on him, um, you know, and, and, you know, got him, got him to where he was, he was breathing again and, you know, mm. and rushed him to the hospital. Yeah. Uh, so my wife was at the elementary school, you know, they called her, told her, and then uh, she called me. I was in downtown Austin. Uh, wow. Which uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that area, but it, it traffic is not, not, not good. Avoid it at all costs, man. I'll even pay $10 to go out of my way. Yeah. <laughs> Miss yeah. that stuff, man. As a dad, how stressful that was. Yeah. Keep, keep going. Oh man. Yeah. Uh. So, you know, jump, jump in my truck, uh, you know, just run straight out of the office, jump in my truck and head down 35. And you know, the weirdest thing is there wasn't, uh, there wasn't any traffic. Whoa. And I made it home and like, 30 minutes. Wow. Uh, and, 
so my wife, I'll let her tell her story and how yeah. I performed you. Yeah. Um, I was, yeah, at the time I was a teacher at, um, at my older two students, um, or my older two kiddos school. Yeah. And yeah, I got a phone call from a paramedic and mm. immediately just fell to my knees. I mean, it's mm. your worst nightmare that you don't even imagine whatever happened. Um, so I scooped up my two kids and actually one of my lifelong best friends worked with me at the time and she didn't hesitate to just stick us in her car and drive us to the hospital. Um, yeah. And just ran in and, um, my mom was holding hunt against her chest in a hospital bed in the ER. And he was, he still had his wet cold diaper on. It was a cold day. I mean, it was like early March, I think. Yeah. Um, so it was just, uh, it, it was quite a sight. Mm. Wow. Well, I can't imagine as a mom, I mean, as any parent just dealing with that, uh, I can't even imagine. Mm -mm. Yeah. So they, they wanted to life fly into San Antonio and the winds were too high that they couldn't get the helicopter to land. So um, they ended up putting him into an ambulance and, and we drove down to Children's Hospital in San Antonio, the uh, Christus. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, you know, they, they, they got us right in, you know, there, um, you know, you, you're seeing him, you, he appears to be fine. Um, so you think, you know, the, the idea is that everything's good, right? I'm not mm. for us. And then they, they tell us about um, what, I guess what they call like a delayed drowning. So okay. they say that the water in their lungs can get uh, infected and, and that would uh, essentially lead to drowning technically. So they had to observe him for two days. Okay. So we just, you know, we hung out with him in the hospital and that's when you see that picture that you know I sent you today. And, uh, yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna tell you about that a little bit. But, uh, yeah, we went, we were walking around the halls, you know, as you can imagine being in a hospital, we were so thankful that he was passing all his tests and for, you know, brain damage and he was breathing, obviously he was walking and playing. So we were, wow. at, you know, this is the second day and we were just relieved and, but you can imagine being in the hospital with an 18 month old, we couldn't <laughs> room the whole time um and it right. was neat being a children's hospital because kids would go out in the hallways and kind of walk around and play so we did that we were walking the halls and um because obviously it was Christus I mean there were statues of you know Jesus and angels everywhere and um he was kind of toddling behind us in his little hospital gown and we at one point kind of turned around to say like come on and we both of us just stopped in our tracks and it, he was standing in front of um, an angel statue and he had his hand up just staring at it with his hand up like this and it was long enough for us to see it and then get our phone out to take a picture it, it was just amazing we were just we were floored at that that's unbelievable i, I mean I, I, it's incredible i just love that i showed that picture and of course i'll have that picture for people to see so they know what we're referencing but when i showed it to my wife she's like man god has some big plans for that guy <laughs> i know we say we say the same thing all the time we're like man yeah he's he's definitely got plans for hunt <laughs> right right oh my gosh <sighs> So, yeah, so, you know, he's good. We're released, uh, you know, fast forward probably, man, probably six to eight months. And uh, he's going to school at a, well, maybe longer than that. I think um, it was a couple, like a year. About a year, probably. Uh, okay. Going to school at uh, first, first Protestant, mm -hmm. um, like a little day school, you know, pre-K. And, oh, yeah. and so I guess outside of their school is a large statue of Jesus. And it just kind of, just kind of there as you walk in, you kind of walk around the statue to get in the doors. And uh, every morning uh, when he goes to school, you know, he waves at it and says, Hey Jesus. 
<laughs> well, I just, I just thought it was super cute. And then one day my older kids were in the car. I was like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to go take, no, I, I, yeah, I'm going to go pick Hunt up from his classroom. Y'all stay. I mean, they were old enough and yeah. I'll, I'll go get Hunt. So I went and got him and we're walking out back to the car and he walks past, um, the statue and he's like hey Jesus I was like oh yeah hi Jesus you know and we started talking about Jesus and he goes Jesus was at honey's pool and I said what did you just say he said Jesus was in honey's pool in which honey is what they call my mom That's right grandma. and I just I, I got chills again but I yes. my eyes immediately teared up and I couldn't get to the car fast enough. And I told my big kids and they all were just floored. And I mean, it was so, it was emotional for all of us. Cause I was like, how, you know, he's, he's two years old. Like it, it, nobody had ever said anything, you know, to right. him it, it was just, oh, it was just amazing. That is just beautiful. Yeah. That is just incredible. Yep. So, you know, as he's getting older and, he's, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's getting a little rambunctious, you know, Langley, Coach Langley, you know, he loves him. And so uh, anytime he does something, uh, Langley will tell me, hey, don't mess with that kid. You know, he swims with Jesus. Yeah. So. <laughs> I love that. <clears throat> Man, he swims with Jesus. The boy who swims with Jesus, right? Yes. Yes. Uh wow. Incredible. A miracle. Yep. Absolutely, man. So what other thoughts do you guys have on this story? What did that do to your faith? I mean, I mean that'll solidify quite a few things for you. You know, I've, I, we've always raised, raised our kids, obviously in a, a Christian household and we've always believed in Jesus. And, but when you experience something as traumatic as our whole family did. And then, you know, for that, almost just that, that proof, you know, that he was right. there, we knew he was, but you know, it was, it was great for me, like for the kids to get to experience that so early um, because they have no doubts. I mean, they are just, they, they are 100% like they tell their friends that story all the time. And yeah. I, it was just, it's amazing. It was really amazing for me anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. Was, I mean, just seeing everybody's, you know, reaction in the family to it and the belief that they have, it's, it's been really good. Man, that's phenomenal. <clears throat> well, I just love that Jesus was in honey's pool. I mean, yep. Gosh, that is just beautiful. Well, that, like I said, that really strengthens my faith. And I love to share with my listeners and viewers just the, the work of Jesus today, you know, the miraculous that he does today. And we don't even know how long that hunt was drowned. I mean, that he was yeah. under. Yeah. Well, um, he wasn't conscious when they brought him up. No. Right. So, so that, there, such a miracle. A, an incredible miracle on so many different levels. So it'll be, you know, that'll be something we'll find out. We'll, we'll go to the film room in heaven and we'll find out more about that. I'm ready for that visual of, you know, Jesus down in the pool, swimming, swimming with hunt. So um, I know. we are too. I love it. I love it. Well, that is just a beautiful story. And I pray that for those of you who are listening or watching that that is strengthening your faith. You may have a story. <laughs> I don't know if similar, but you might have a story where Jesus has showed up. And I know sometimes he's just working behind the scenes. And honestly, if Hunt hadn't said that, you know, we would just yeah. never know. We would give thanks to God for the miracle that he is. But man, Hunt said something and you being the good parents that you are, I mean, you just took it exactly as it was like, you yep. know, that's, that's what happened. So that's just beautiful. Well, thank you guys for sharing that story with us. Is there anything else you want to add? That's really what I wanted to hear from you guys. It's just so beautiful. Yeah, no, yeah. that's it. It's, it's not, it's not an easy story to tell, but uh, it's, it's good to get it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I, 
I can't imagine. I mean, just the going back. I mean, immediately you're back there in Austin, stuck as a dad, unable to help, and that draws me. And as a mom, like what? Even though it turned out well, uh, turned out uh, amazing. Just the the thoughts that would go through your mind and go through as you relive it again, even with that great story, which I love about Jesus, just that even when he was at the tomb of Lazarus, knowing that he was going to call him back to life, that Jesus stands there and weeps, even though, I mean, he could, if I was Jesus, I would have been like, everybody stop. I got this move aside. But Jesus, he, he cares with us. He hurts with us. You know, he goes through it all with us. So um, pretty amazing. So I, I just walked in. This is Hunt. What's up, Hunt? Uh, What's going on, man? You swim with Jesus, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, hey, Hunt, congratulations on uh, finishing up fifth grade. Thank you. How are you feeling about sixth grade? Um. um Excited and nervous at the same time. Okay. All right. What middle school are you going to be going to? Mountain Valley. Okay. All right. Now, are you a guy who plays sports or does band or anything? What do you like to play? I like to play sports. Okay. All right. You have a favorite? Uh, football. Okay. What position do you usually play? Wide receiver. Wide receiver. You got good hands? Okay. <laughs> Does your dad let you have receiver gloves or anything, or you just use your bare hands? I, I usually have gloves. You got some pretty <laughs> sweet gloves, I imagine. Soft I'll love hands. it. <laughs> Soft hands. All right, man. That's good. That's good. <laughs> and what about this summer? What you got going on this summer, huh? Uh, I got a couple of camps, and, and then... Uh, what camps? Uh, A&M football camp. And of course. I mean, come on. <laughs> and then uh, T bar M. Oh, T bar M, man. That's a that's a good one. I've got a couple of uh young friends that have been working there over their over the summer. So hopefully some of those guys get to know you. I'll I'll give them a little heads up when you're out there. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Well, hey, uh, your parents have just shared the story of you swimming with Jesus. And uh, like my wife said, man, God must have something special in store for you and some work in this world that only you can accomplish. So I'm excited to see what that is. But thank you. You've really inspired people today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. You got it. I love it. I love it. Thanks for bringing Hunt on. Yeah. Dang, man. That's <laughs> awesome. I really appreciate that. My wife had asked earlier, you know, so who are you going to interview? Are you going to interview him? I said, well, he's like a year and a half old when this happened. Yeah. So <clears throat> he doesn't remember any of it. He doesn't. I mean, you remember. Well, I don't know how much, but not very much. <laughs> right, right, right. So that is awesome. So we did talk to uh, Graham, who was there. Uh, just a little bit ago and just kind of asked him what he, what he remembered, you know, he was, he would have probably been five at the time. Um, and he, he, he recalled everything, just every detail, every detail. You're kidding me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the firefighters, when they came in, they kind of took him away from the scene and gave him a, a dolphin stuffed animal dolphin. And he had that thing for, for a long time. Wow. I mean, I don't remember much about being five years old. I, I mean, I understand that'd be so yeah. traumatic, um, yeah. but that's, that's amazing. Yeah. I know we were kind of shocked that he, he just spit it out detail by detail. And we were both kind of like, Oh yeah. I mean, that was obviously a very, <laughs> very big day for him too. So yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Well, God yeah. is at work and, uh, man, y'all are a blessed family and y'all are a blessing. So thank you so much in this crazy busy week that you would yeah. take time to inspire others. Oh man. Thank you for having us. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. I'll just, uh, just stand there one second. I'll just remind people, man, that's hope. That's living hope. That's hope. Jesus is real. He wants to help you and he doesn't have to show up in the pool to swim with, uh, swim with you. He, he just wants to show up with his joy and love in your life. 
And if you've experienced that, sometimes you have to hold on to that because you go through storms and you go through hard times and you go through times where you feel like you're standing outside the tomb of Lazarus and just take heart and take hope knowing that Jesus, as they're reliving this, I mean, he feels that too. He feels that too. He felt the stress of a dad who's trying to get home. Man, no traffic from Austin. <laughs> That's pretty crazy yeah. too. He's at work. He's at work. Because of that, when you look at that hope, then you can live very bold. And that's why we're called Very Bold Ministries. Uh, The Apostle Paul said it way better than me. Uh, Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. All right, we'll stop that, y'all. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold.